Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Bite planes or occlusal splints are used to disocclude the teeth temporarily for the following purposes. Eliminate conflict between occlusal and temporomandibular joint guidance. Reposition the condyles to their normal position prior to registration of jaw relations. Eliminate pain from temporomandibular joint and muscle dysfunction syndromes. Eliminate bruxism. Relax the musculature. Prevent excessive wear of teeth. Break occlusal habits, such as fingernail biting. Stabilize mobile teeth and prevent hypereruption of teeth without antagonists. Differential diagnosis of facial pain. This film will illustrate the fabrication of a bite plane on articulated casts. The technique for mounting casts in a semi-adjustable articulator has been described in a previous film. The mounted casts of the patient to be demonstrated display a slide from centric relation to centric occlusion. Fabrication begins with the elimination of undercuts. Those undercuts related to the contour of the teeth are blocked out. The casts have been soaked in water a soft mix of impression plaster is placed into the tooth undercuts. A wax spatula is used to remove excess plaster. Ultimately, all tooth undercuts, buccally and palatally, are blocked out. The incisal pin is raised sufficiently to allow free articulator movement of the casts without tooth contacts. The protrusive movements are cleared to permit enough thickness to avoid fractures or perforations of the bite plane. The bite should be raised at least two millimeters in the second molar areas. The condyles may settle into the glenoid fossae and bring the molars closer together when the bite plane has been in use for some time. The occlusal plane may be raised beyond the rest position. No unfavorable sequelae have been encountered from temporarily raising the bite. When a deep overbite is present, the incisal pin should be raised sufficiently to clear the incisal edges of the anterior teeth. A sheet of hard base plate wax is softened. The wax is folded over and reheated. It is then applied over the teeth of the maxillary cast. The wax is molded over the teeth and surrounding areas. The excess wax is trimmed with a hot wax spatula. The wax in the palate is carved to a U-shape, allowing enough thickness to provide sufficient strength in the bite plane. The wax is removed from the buccal surfaces of the teeth. The occlusal surface of the wax is re-softened. The articulator is closed as far as the incisal pin will allow. The incisal pin must make contact with the incisal table of the articulator to ensure the desired vertical dimension of the bite plane.
The imprints made by the mandibular teeth on the occlusal surface are inspected. A sharp knife is used to reduce the height of the occlusal imprints. In the final stages of the procedure, the small imprints of the opposing teeth in the wax are identified and the wax scraped away to the bottom of these marks. Imprints of the opposing teeth are now barely visible. Excess wax is trimmed away in the palate because this area is needed for tongue space. The wax should extend about two millimeters palatally from the imprint of the mandibular incisor teeth to allow for potential distal positioning of the mandible following the use of the bite plane. The entire occlusal surface of the wax is made flat and reduced to the bottom of the markings made by the opposing teeth. The mesial and distal borders of the maxillary cuspids are marked on the buccal aspect of the wax. These marks assist in locating areas required for cuspid guidance. A narrow strip of wax is softened. This is positioned for the cuspid guidance pattern. The wax is fused to the rest of the wax up. After wax has been added to both maxillary cuspid regions, the surface of the cuspid guidance is re-softened with an alcohol torch. The articulator is closed as far as the incisal pin will allow. A pattern is generated for cuspid guidance in the wax by moving the articulated casts in a series of protrusive and lateral movements. During such movements, all other parts of the wax model should be disoccluded. In straight protrusive excursion, both cuspid guidance areas of the bite plane should make contact. Excess bulk of the wax is removed from the buccal and labial aspects. The wax is sealed to the cast with a hot instrument. The wax pattern is now complete. There are centric stops for all mandibular teeth. Cuspid guidance with posterior disocclusion is provided for all eccentric movements. The wax up is ready to be sent to the laboratory for processing in heat cured clear acrylic. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.